What's up guys? Welcome back to our Bible study. I am super excited for what the Lord wants us to talk about today. We are still in the Old Testament. If you have not been following the Bible studies that we've been doing, there are two that are already uploaded or at least should be uploaded, which is Genesis 1 and Exodus 3. And so today we are jumping into Joshua 1. I'm super excited to talk about it today as we have in the other videos we're going to do in this video, which is we are going to pray before we jump into Joshua, just kidding. Yeah, Joshua 1. So let's pray. Father, I am so thankful for this moment. I pray that you would have your way. I pray that we would be encouraged and equipped by your word. It is in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right. So jumping into Joshua 1, Joshua is one of the books of the Bibles that are often talked about because there are certain scriptures in them that a lot of people quote, um, such as like be strong and courageous and just knowing like to study this book continually. And so the classic verses that are often quoted, we're going to talk about that today. We're going to stick with Joshua 1. We're only going to talk about a few verses, but I really feel like there's a lot within these few verses that can be super encouraging and impactful for our lives. So I'm super excited to jump right into it. We're going to read verses 1 through 2 first, and then we'll go from there. Joshua 1, 1 through 2 says, After the death of Moses, the Lord's servant, the Lord spoke to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' assistant. He said, Moses, my servant is dead. Therefore, the time has come for you to lead the people, the Israelites, across the Jordan River into the land I am giving them. Here we have Moses was a great leader. He was one who at the very beginning didn't want to answer the call of the Lord, but finally he picked up, he fulfilled what God had for him, and now he is dead. He is with the Lord. He has finished his race. He has finished what he needed to do. And now it is time for Joshua, who was the assistant of Moses, who was the second in command to Moses, the one who watched Moses lead the people of Israel and hear the voice of God and do what God commanded. Now it's Joshua's turn to lead the people. Now it's Joshua's turn to fulfill the plans that God has for him when it comes to the leadership role of leading the people of Israel out of Egypt into the promised land. And so um, it, what's beautiful about this is that Joshua didn't ask for this, but God called him to it, very similar to Moses. Moses didn't ask for him to be a leader who would lead the people from slavery and bondage into freedom and abundance. He didn't ask for that, but God called him to it. And it's the same thing with Joshua. And it's the same thing for you and for me that there are certain spaces that we are occupying. There are certain workplaces that we are in. There are certain friends groups that we are in that we don't really ideally we didn't ask for it but the Lord has places in it his divine will his sovereign way is that we were to be in those spaces in those places at this very moment in time and the reason for it is so that we can be the leaders and the encouragement that God gives Joshua and Joshua 1 is the same encouragement that he gives us so what happens is as we go throughout um God tells Joshua, like, I want you to go into the land that's already being possessed by this nation and that place and this person and that thing. I, I know it's the place that I'm sending you. I know it's being occupied by someone else. In fact, your enemies. And I know you don't think you'll be able to overcome the people that are there. But I done said that you are going to inherit this land, this land flowing with milk and honey. It is a place for you. It is a land I am giving you. And so the authority of God has already been spoken. Now the obedience of man has to be given. And this is where Joshua finds himself. This is where you and I may find ourselves is that God has said what he has said which will happen but he needs our obedience in order for it to take place and so here in Joshua 1 kind of like 3 through 6 God is giving the the ins and outs of what jo Joshua is soon to experience and what the land is being possessed by and who they're being possessed by and so here we have in verse 7 which is often quoted, you may have heard it, you may not have. So if you have it, then here you go for the first time. And if you have, 
here you go again. It says, be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the instructions Moses gave you. Do not deviate from them, turning either to the right or to the left. Then you will be successful in everything you do. See, what we love about this is that oftentimes the first part of Joshua 1 and 7 is what's quoted. Be strong and very courageous, right? Don't be afraid of what's to come. And it talks about that in a later verse, I think actually in verse 9 as well. That is one that is often quoted as well. But here, God knew what was in the heart and in the mind of Joshua. Joshua, number one, didn't ask to lead the people. I think Joshua was good with being the assistant. Like, you know what I mean? The second in command, like y'all go and talk to Moses. And then if y'all can't, you know, figure it out with him, then you can come and talk to me. And so maybe Joshua felt good with being the assistant, but now he is the leader. And Joshua is a young man who was leading versus Moses, who was well on in his age. There was wisdom attached to him. There was a reverence and also just this respect that people had, for the most part, towards Moses. And so now you got a younger guy leading people who are older than him. Now, he may have been intimidated, which is why God said, be strong and very courageous. There are situations and circumstances that we will experience in life where we feel like, oh, well, I don't know if I can fit that mold. And God says, Joshua 1, 7 over us, be strong and very courageous. Now he says also to Joshua to obey all the instructions that Moses gave him. Now Moses walked very closely with the Lord. There were certain things that Moses experienced in his life that only him and God were to experience with each other. There was an intimacy between Moses and his father. And so what we learn from this is that God was telling Joshua, hey, Listen to the words of Moses. He and I walk closely together. Take what he has told you and live that thing out. This is why it's important to have mentors, spiritual mentors who may not necessarily be older than you in age, but they are mature or more mature than you are in spiritual maturity. And so it's important that we listen to those people and we take what God has told them and we apply it to our lives and we walk in the ways that God has shown them for our lives and it's important. So this is what God commanded Joshua. This is what God commands us. Then he says in verse eight, study this book of instruction continually. Meditate on it day and night so you will be sure to obey everything written in it. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. Now I know, I, I'm sure, I am sure every single person on this earth desires to be successful and to prosper in every single aspect of their lives. It is a common thing. We want to be blessed. We want to be in full of abundance. We want life to be great. This is the desire of people. I don't know many people. I don't know anyone actually that says, ah, oh, I just want life to suck all the time. I just want sorrow to fill my life day in and day out. No, we want blessings, abundance, anointing, all the things. And so here in the scripture, it is told that the only way that we can be successful and prosper in everything we do is not because of financial, not being financially fit, nor is it being physically fit, but it's being spiritually fit. It is meditating on the word of God day and night. It is a daily practice, not a weekly thing. It is a daily practice, not a every now and then thing. It is a daily practice, not a when I think about it, then I'll read it. It is daily. Every single day, should we sit before the Lord, reading the words of God, making sure that we are not only just reading it, but we're meditating on it. What does that mean? That means it is a deeper level of understanding that should be made when we meet with God. This is a practical way that I do it. Sometimes I will write a verse such as, you know, Joshua 1 and 8, I will write this verse down in my notebook. I will circle, underline, highlight certain words that stand out to me, and then I'll define those words. So for example, let's say there's the word all in the verse. I will define it as everything. It sounds very elementary. It sounds very kiddish, but what it's doing is as I'm breaking down the scripture, I am increasing my understanding of God's word. And so that is what's talked about in Joshua 1 as well, that as we meditate, Meditate on God's word, not just read it, skim by it, scan through it and think that's good enough. But as we actually take in word after word, as we allow the Holy Spirit to illuminate words that we are to, imp to impart into our lives, there we will find success and prosperity in everything that we do. And then finally, in verse 9, it says, This is my command, be strong and courageous. 
Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Now, I recently graduated college. Um, I graduated with my ultrasound degree. I have also recently started my new job in ultrasound and I have been scared throughout the whole process. I was scared when I graduated college. I was scared when I started the new job. I was scared when I was in training for the job. There was a lot of fear and so what happens is that the Lord commands us to not be afraid, to be discouraged, even though we know we're going to experience that. And he knows that. But he's saying that instead of living in the discouragement, instead of living in the fear, that we would actually take on the truth of his word, which is that wherever the Lord is, there is freedom. So it says here, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. That means the rod and the staff that is talked about in Psalm 23 is with me. That means that God goes before me, the warrior, the king, the holy one. He is with me. And so the fear and the disappointment can't keep me down. It may come at me, but you can't keep me down. You know what I'm saying? And so I had to implement the presence of God into my life when I was anxious with work, when I was anxious with graduating college, and when I've been anxious in any other circumstance that I would not stay in that mold but that I would ask the Holy Spirit to make room in my heart to do what only he can do so that fear and discouragement wouldn't keep me down but it may just come every now and then but he would help me and so we learn in Joshua 1 that there may be positions and there may be commands that God gives you to fulfill that we may not feel qualified for but he says that I am with you and wherever the Lord is there is freedom there is healing there is victory we want to make sure that we read God's word on a daily basis and not just read it but meditate on it actually dissecting it deepening our understanding of it because that is only when we are successful and we will have prosperity in everything that we do now I hope that encouraged you. I hope you understand Joshua 1 just a little bit more. Be sure to share your thoughts with me of what these scriptures mean that we talked about today or any other scriptures that we may not have discussed today that you find to be very fascinating, that you have questions about. I'm excited to dive deeper into God's word with you guys and I would love nothing more than for you to share this with a friend to make sure that you're following me on all the platforms that I have so that we can stay connected and we can stay Stay rooted in God's word together. I love you guys so, so much. And I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye, y'all.